there's a whole new language online, right? Do you know it? No, no we're going to see. All right. Little quiz. ASL. Very common question. Age, sex, and location. Okay, that, that was easy. Okay, what about the last part? RP. Ready? Race and picture. TDTM. Talk dirty to me. No. <laughs> Later, that's my husband. <laughs> the grooming behavior that we have seen can take months or it can take a very short amount of time depending on the offender. And little by little, the conversation will turn off into a very sexual nature and they'll start to talk to the child about what their interests are and they'll try to find out uh, what the child's interests are. and, and Often uh, they will get the child to say things that the child couldn't even imagine uh, talking about. And sometimes children will talk about things that they don't even know what they mean because they're clearly very adult sexual conversations. Typically I would just start by asking for a regular picture and then if it got to that level I would eventually ask for a, a picture of more of a sexual nature. Grooming is really easy to understand once you give thought to it. Every Everybody wants to feel love. And these people online are willing to make you feel that way. And you know, it never occurs to you that the person that you're talking to may be a monster. And they do it in the most subtle ways. You know, you get in a fight with a friend. Your friend called you that? Oh my gosh, why would your friend ever call you that? That's not a friend. I'm your real friend. I would never say anything like that. And they pull you away from everything around you, you know, all your friends and your family and your teachers. And as you're getting pulled away, you're getting closer to him. My name is Alicia Kozakevich, and when I was 13 years old, I was abducted by an internet predator. In 2002, I was totally clueless as to the dangers of the internet. My daughter was sitting in a common room talking to a box. Mm -hmm. yeah, to my mind, that's what she was doing. All of the knowledge of the world is, is able to be gotten now through the internet. Alicia had been engaging in online discussions with Scott Tyree who was then a 40-year-old computer programmer from Herndon, Virginia. He was interested in sadomasochistic activity. He wanted to be a master for teen slave girls. He was looking for a child uh, to make his sex slave. And Alicia was just starting to use the computer at that time and starting to use the internet and, and to engage in discussions of a uh, sexually curious nature and she talked with him about some of these activities which I'm convinced she had no idea what he was talking about. I trusted him wholeheartedly. He was a friend no matter what. And he was my best friend and confidant. Tell him anything. He had the answer for any question. I remember being at the top of the hill and hiding behind a tree And when I said, you know what, why am I here? You know, I, I, my senses came back from, why am I here? And I went to turn around and he called my name. So when he brought Alicia to his home, he immediately, uh, immediately abused her and then videotaped that abuse. And he broadcast this to his friends, to his network. And it was one of those individuals who saw this activity that reported it to law enforcement. Well, he held me captive by a chain to my neck and a locked collar for four days. And he had a dungeon in the basement. And I mean, let, let, your, let your worst nightmares come to your mind and that's what happened. It 
was beaten and raped and tortured and treated like an animal. The rescue, though. <laughs> they came in and busted down the door and I was relieved, extremely relieved, once I saw those three letters, FBI, on the back of their jackets in bold yellow letters. I mean, you, that's not a feeling you can describe, it's being at the end of the rope, feeling like you're about to die, and then somebody saying, oh, no, you get a second chance at life, here you go. And I feel that I was rescued for a reason. And that reason is to save kids from the same thing happening to them, to show them that it can happen to them, that this is real, this isn't a horror story, a movie. This is real. These people exist. And Alicia always says the FBI walk on water. I think Alicia walks on water. <laughs> Parents, they need to really you know, they need to pay attention to their kids' activities. They gotta stop just trying to be the child's friend and give them all the privacy in the world. <laughs> and, you know, to have blocks on the family computer, I think that's something really important. I think it's important to put, you know, monitoring software on when your child is really young so that they grow with it, so they know it's there, so you don't put it on there when they're 13 and they rebel against you in the worst ways. And online, it's really, really hard to define a stranger. Because a lot of times, you know, you'll talk to your real friend online from school, and then they'll introduce you to their friend from another school, and then you're in a realm of people you don't know. But you all feel connected because you have that common string. They give you this information about them, their name, maybe where they live, their dog's name. So you feel like you know this person. You really have to pay attention to what your kids are doing. You have to be really careful. Your kids are curious about sex. They are, and they're gonna look for answers. And somebody online will answer them. Somebody online would like to show them. <laughs>